welcome back to my channel ah so this vlog is my skin surgery consultation vlog i am so excited i'm nervous but i would say i'm mostly excited um so it is now sunday at like 8 30 p.m so i'm flying out tomorrow morning to seattle to phoenix um and i'm gonna meet with dr dry um, for my consultation, so he's gonna take a look at me. I'm gonna ask him a ton of questions and all that fun stuff So I'm really excited and I got a lot of questions from you guys on Instagram that I'll be asking and I'm gonna be just vlogging this whole thing and you guys get to meet him as well and All that fun stuff. So I'm just gonna kind of show you right now I'm just getting everything together for tomorrow. So thankfully I am just going by myself um, Instead of bringing Jax because he's no longer breastfeeding so I don't have to bring him with me which is really nice but also like I'm like I have anxiety first I haven't left Jack since he's been born um he's almost eight months old now I know my husband's gonna be fine but it's just that mommy thing you just like don't want to leave like I do but I don't like I'm excited to get alone time but then at the same time like I was putting Jax to bed tonight and I was just snuggling him like extra long and I came out and I was just crying and I was like I already miss him because <laughs> I'm gonna be gone before he wakes up tomorrow so Shay was like, you'll be fine, but I was like, I was a mess. So that's gonna be hard for like a day. It's like literally two days, technically. It's I'm going all day tomorrow and then staying the night and then I'll, I won't be back until like 8 p.m. on Tuesday night, so Jack's will already be asleep. But I'm gonna miss my babies, but I'm excited to have some me time. And yeah, so I'm gonna show you guys what I'm packing. Since I am going alone, I don't have to pack anything barely because it's just one night. If I had to bring Jax, I would have had to check a bag. Like, it would have had to been a whole thing. I would have had to bring the car seat, the carrier, the... Oh, my gosh. But I'm just bringing a backpack, and that's it. So I'm going to show you guys what I'm bringing. Okay, so, of course, I'm bringing my Buffy Collection Game Changer backpack. It's, like, the essential traveling backpack. It's the freaking best. Like, I don't know what I would do without this bag. So I bring this everywhere I go when I travel and a diaper bag you guys know I use it for everything so these are still available online if you guys want to check them out but I'll show you what I'm bringing so I have my little just like I have um this is my Tula like travel kit um this is the bag that it comes with and then I have my glasses I'm wearing them right now but I'll put my glasses in my glasses case I have toothbrush little travel makeup wipes just like all that essential stuff skincare like you know all those type of things and then I have my wallet this is the game changer wallet love um, and then I just have like a comb and an extra mask and some actually I'll put this in my little bag it's just a little dry shampoo and then I have my hairbrush I have my airpods which were gifted to me by Alani they gave me this custom case I've never had airpods before and I'm freaking obsessed with them they are so like noise canceling it's crazy like so crazy so i'm super excited to have these for my trip um so i have those with me and then i have little um like a pj outfit for when i'm at the hotel i am staying just one night so i have some pjs and then i have my outfit for when i'm traveling home which is some leggings and a cropped top of course all buff bunny collection um and then i have my macbook charger so in the side pocket i have my laptop in there and then down here i have all my snacks that i'm bringing for the plane um and like the hotel or whatever i am going out to dinner um so i'll have that but just for snacks for the plane i have um some bars i have two bags of pitos the zesty ranch are my favorite and i have the cheddar and then i have two bags of the fit snack gummy candies and that is that guys this bag fits so much stuff i could easily fit more stuff in there it's like crazy um so yeah that's literally all i'm bringing and then i have my outfit set out for tomorrow so so nice i like don't have to bring anything i don't have to check a bag i don't have to have like a big carry-on suitcase like i just get this little backpack i get to carry around traveling's gonna be so much easier since i'm just going by myself like if you're a mom you know it's like 10 times harder to travel with kids so I'm really excited, but yeah, that's all I'm bringing. Good morning, guys. It is 5.30 in the morning. Um, I'm all ready to go. Um, I have my bag here. I am wearing just like this lounge outfit from Buff Bunny Collection, still available on the website. Um, so I think I'm gonna go, I'm all ready and everything. I didn't wanna leave until six because 
there's really no need to but i think i might as well just go and like get coffee um and drink it like before i go on the plane so that's what i'm gonna do i'm gonna head out and go to duncan and then just go to the airport i am leaving my car there so i have to like park my car and all that stuff but i don't really mind waiting in the airport if i'm by myself if i have the kids i'm like <sighs> but I don't have the kids, so I'm going to head out, and I'm so excited, and I will probably talk to you when I get to Seattle next. Tell me again, so tell me your story getting to this point. I know you lost right. a lot of weight, but sort of yeah. how you did it, what'd you do? Okay, so about three years ago now, I was, I had basically tried every single thing out there to lose weight. Yeah. I just, nothing ever stuck. Um, I just always felt restricted and I would quit, like all that over and over. And I was at the point where I wanted weight loss surgery. Yeah. So I was talking to my mom about it. We were looking into it and my insurance at the time just needed like proof of a failed weight loss program. I right. hit all the other criteria basically. So my mom had done Weight Watchers before and she's like, why don't you just try it? And you know, if it doesn't work, then we can go ahead and get your surgery. So I was kind of like, yeah, whatever, okay. yeah. 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 <laughs> Let's yeah. just get it over yeah. with kind of thing. So I went in there and signed up and my son was, like, my first son, he was a year old at the time. And I just kind of jumped right into it. Yeah. And my first week I lost like eight pounds or something. And I was like actually liking what I was eating. So yeah. I was like, okay, like maybe this, this yeah, maybe this could work. And yeah, like a year and a half later I hit my goal weight and year and a half. Nice. Yeah. It ended Good up for working. You. So it's crazy. It's crazy how it all happened yeah. that way. But so how much are you down? 145. Well, I'm at lowest 145. About 140 now, yeah. I'd say. Good for you. Yeah. That's an okay. amazing thing. I mean, good for you. I mean, that's an amazing, you know, job to be able to lose that amount of weight, you know, especially in that short of time. Yeah. Having the dedication, motivation to be able to do it. Yeah. I mean, it's an amazing, it's an amazing thing. I mean, it's sort of a, a feat that not many people can actually accomplish yeah. at this point. But yeah, sticking with something and sticking with a plan and having that dedication to do it. Yeah. It's remarkable. Thank you. So good for you. Yeah. Thank you. So how's your weight now? Is it going up, going down? Um, I fluctuate usually just between the same like 10 pounds. I'm usually like 160, 170. I'm up a little up right now because I had my birthday last week, so I went out a lot. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm like, I, yeah. okay. I said before I go to my consultation, I'm going to be close to my lowest. And then I was like, oh week before I'm not gonna be close <laughs> so was it a birthday or was it a birth week no it was I mean, like a birth week uh, I went out with, right, went right, out with right. my husband one day then my friends one day my other friend one day so all so right nice. <laughs> <laughs> got it all out of my system okay. yeah you're entitled that's good yeah okay all right so and otherwise now healthy no other major medical yep. issues no nope. okay all right fantastic so the current weight you are now main issues for you are what Definitely my stomach is number one. Okay. Um, and then I would say like my my side, like I have a lot on my sides and like my yeah. back. Um, and then my chest. Okay. Those are probably my top. And then my thighs, but my arms really aren't that bad. I did some decent toning with my arms, but um, I would say my two top are my stomach, sides, and then my breasts. Okay. All right. Yeah. And it's all, it's always sort of a, a priority list because again, I mean, you can't lose that much weight right. and not have extra skin everywhere. Yeah. I mean, that's just sort of the, the, the nature of the process. Mm -hmm. But again, it's just sort of a priority. I mean, yeah. you know, I'd love to be able to tell you, yep, we can take care of absolutely everything all at once. Yeah. But that's not, it, you know, we want to be able to do as much as we possibly can uh, at one time, but safely. Right. Right. And that's yeah. the paramount importance, being able to do something for you so that it's going to be good for you, you're going to get a good result, but in, in a safe fashion. Right. So it becomes, yeah, a list of priorities in terms of what, what bugs you the most and then addressing those things first and then sort of moving on down the line. Yeah. Two C-sections. Okay. 
Wow, you just skin. <laughs> wow. Well, that feels good because I know I'm at my <clears throat> up, upper range. But and then this wow, was from um, a okay. car accident when I was younger. Okay. Um, I had to have surgery for some okay. internal bleeding and stuff. Oh, but, internal bleeding. So they didn't yeah. take out your spleen or anything like no, that. Okay. No, no. So they just stopped bleeding. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Wow. Yeah. No fat. I mean, good cool. for you. <laughs> nice. No, this is great. So. Yeah, I mean, essentially, you've just got some loose skin here, which is normal. Obviously, if you lose 145 pounds, right. you're going to have loose skin. But the, the amount of actual fat that you've got is very minimal. Let me even turn to the side a little bit here. So one of the things we always sort of look at is, you know, when we, <clears throat> when we see somebody's lost weight, can we do the front only, or do we need to do the front and all the way around the back? Right. And, and part of that sort of depends upon sort of how much loose tissue you have, primarily this stuff right into mm -hmm. here and towards the back. Okay. Because when we just do the front, we're pulling the front down and the front looks good, but if, the, if you've got a lot yeah. of extra lax skin or loose skin on the side here, this kind of sticks out. Okay. Right. So, so easiest way to tell is you just pinch it and you kind of go like that. And okay. so, right, the amount of loose skin that you have is essentially everything from about here to here. Okay. So all of that, right, yeah. is kind of what you take out if you go all the way around. Okay. And so, let me see in the front again here. So again, in your situation, again, the best aesthetic is to go all the way around. Okay. And that's simply just based upon the fact that you've got pretty significant... Right. You don't really have fat here. This mm -hmm. is just mostly skin. And again, you've done a phenomenal job getting rid of the fat. Thank you. So good for you. So in a sense, you know, for you, going all the way around is going to give you the best aesthetic result, both in the front, sort of on the side, and on the back. Okay. And with that, you know, we make an incision that's low, so if your C-section scar is actually kind of high, so yeah. it actually go a lot lower. So I mean, down here, okay. and that incision kind of comes along into here. And then it comes around onto the side here, and the incision comes around onto the back. And we'll take up all of that. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. So it helps to lift up on the outside. <laughs> helps to lift up on the outside of the thigh. Lifts up on the butt like that. All of this stuff comes out. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Looks really nice in the thighs. Right. Yes. Lifts up on all yeah. of this. Yeah. Now that's yes. great. I love that. Yeah, so, of course, <laughs> so this scar comes out, of course. Okay, so we'll completely cool. remove all of okay. that scar. I call it my, my butt on the front. It looks oh, like it's not that bad. Oh my <laughs> gosh. <laughs> it's not pretty at all. No, but again, I mean, it's sort of, I mean, you have it simply because you've lost all of the yeah, weight. And if you had exactly. more weight, um, right, it would yeah. be like that. Yeah. Right, so. When I was pregnant, it looked, it was like. Yeah, it was stretched out. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, again, so completely remove all of that. Okay. Majority, so most of these stretch marks that you have down here would certainly go. You'd still have these stretch yeah. marks here, but these stretch marks would end up down the bottom here. Okay. And this would sort of be out nice and flat. Okay, cool. Which is great. And you've got a small waist underneath here. Which is nice. I do. Yeah, I have a small that's, that's waist great. and like a little bit wider hip, so I think... It'll turn out really nice. Yeah, because certainly when you tighten up the muscles here and you pull that in, that comes a lot smaller, which yeah. is fantastic. Yeah. And you actually, again, I mean, most people sort of when they stand, they think they have a lot bigger hips than they do. Your right. actual hips, this is skin. Yeah. So when we actually lot. lift this up and put this in, your actual bone is down underneath there. So right. it's kind of like that. And that's what it would be, certainly. So this crazy. comes in and that goes in. I can't even like imagine it in my head. So <laughs> Yeah. No, it's great. It's going to look no. really good. Yeah, and I mean, it only looks good because you've done a phenomenal job getting to this point and all of this, which is fantastic. And again, you don't really have much fat. Sometimes we'll liposuction up on the top here, remove some of this extra fat that you have. Okay. But you really don't have much. Okay. Um, you don't. <laughs> That's great. Cool. Yeah, I mean, you do fantastic with that. And again, so giving you all of the options, you could theoretically do the front, right? Yeah. So, so a lot of times... And some people will do the front and the breasts at the same time, mm -hmm. and then somebody will come back and do the back. And I think we talked about it before in terms of the pros and the cons about that. Right. I mean, it's nice to be able to do this and the breasts at the same time. Um, in my estimation, honestly, it's not good to do the 360 and the breast at the same time. That's just. It is. It's a lot. You yeah. can do it, but I think it's just it's too much okay. um, to do safely at one particular time. Right. So. If you do the front and the breast at the same time, the, the benefit of that is you're doing the front and the breast. And you right. get the breast on that. Yeah. However, the downside to that is a couple things. One is this loose skin on the side isn't gone. Um, because when we take off this fat, this skin and the fat from the front, it comes like this. But then we only take off a little bit on the side here because it has to come down so we can close it as a straight right. line. So you still so have this loose... Hang there. Yeah, it does. We can remove some of that fat, but the problem for you is not fat, it's skin. So the more fat we remove, the more you got it. The more okay. loose skin that you're going to get. So this would be flat, but this would be kind of sticking out here. Okay. Um, the second thing is 
this sort of the skin up here. Mm -hmm. So when we do a tummy tuck, we pull this down and we actually, in order to close it up and not leave a lot of extra skin on the side, we actually kind of pull it in like this. And so then this skin up here can get a little bit bunchier. Okay. Especially because if it's a little bit loose here. When we go all the way around, we actually do the opposite. We pull it down and out. So we pull it that way okay. so that this gets flatter. Yeah. Yeah. Way better. Yeah. Yeah. But you have stretch marks to sort of out to the side it means that the skin has lost some of that elasticity here. Mm -hmm. And so it's best to be able to try and pull that as tight as you possibly can out okay. in order to make it flat. It's kind of like a shirt here. You want to be able to pull this. If it's bunched up here, you want to be able to pull it down and out right. like that, yeah. not this way. Okay. Right? Yeah. 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 So, and then also if you come back, we do the front and then the breast at the same time, and then you come back to do the back. The problem is, again, it's this on the side here, because when we take off the front in a tummy tuck, we take it off as a wedge. So it comes down and it comes down sort of like this mm -hmm. to the side so we can close it up as a straight line. If you do the same thing on the back, close it out, excise it as a wedge, and then a little bit on the side, the amount of skin that you've taken out on the side is not much. Okay. But the amount of skin that you need taken out, as we said, is like from here to here. Right. All of that. Okay. Right. So it's difficult to be able to do the front and the back and they be able to get the same or the best aesthetic yeah. result. Okay. Yeah. So for you, yeah. You're the, the pro, around. so I'm listening to you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah all the way around. Okay. Certainly. And then, well, yeah, that's pretty simple, pretty, it's nice. And again, you don't have much fat, you just skin, Good. which is great. Yeah. <laughs> I'm excited. Yeah. Okay. okay. We can talk, you want to talk about the brush? Yeah, we can talk, just because, like, I want to talk about everything just yeah. for future reference. Of course. Just so I know, you okay. know, because I'm sure I'll get questions asked just yeah. for my own self. Yeah. But, um, I just stopped breastfeeding like a few weeks ago. But, I mean, it may still continue to change for a few months. Okay. I mean, as the breast tissue, right. what we call involutes or shrinks, you can actually still get some more sort of, you know, flattening of the breast tissue a little bit. Okay. Okay. So they may change a little bit. They may not, but it's reasonable to expect for the first few months after breastfeeding, it may change a little bit. Okay. My so, main question would just be, because I don't really want implants. Do you think they're too small to like, do you think it would look bad if I just got a lift with no implants? Like, do you think it would be... What, I mean, it's a great question. So what do I, th whether or not they would look bad is a different question than what do I think aesthetically would look the best. Okay. So what do I think aesthetically would look the best and in a situation such as yours as it is in most people who've lost a lot of weight? Yeah. Yeah. Do you need an implant? Oh. Now, okay. now, be that, so you don't need necessarily an implant to make you big, right? Because you, right. don't, you right. don't want to be big. What you want to do is you want to put in an implant to fill out the skin. Yeah. Because if the skin has lost its ability to shrink, it's kind of, a little wrinkled, you got the right. stretch marks under there. And so if you don't have much breast tissue, you can't actually fill up that skin right. with the breast tissue because you don't have much. So what okay. you want to be able to do is you want to put in an implant to plump it up a little bit. Right. Again, not to make you big, because right. you don't want to go back there, but yeah. just to fill it out a little bit. Okay. So in your situation, yeah, I mean, we need to lift the breast back up where they came from. Right. And so I'm just going to lift up underneath mm -hmm. here. So in essence, so you know, your nipple should be sort of somewhere up into here. Yeah. So if we were just going to lift the breast, I mean, it would sort of be like that, of course, your nipple would be up there, right. but it would be kind of like that. Okay. And so the main thing that bothers most people, as you can see, is this. Yeah. Is that you don't have any volume in the upper part of the breast here. Okay. And so putting in a smallish implant in order to be able to try and fill out the skin and fill out this upper pole, yeah, aesthetically okay. looks the best. Okay. For sure. Okay. Yeah. Well, like I said, <laughs> listen to you. <laughs> <laughs> but again, you're, I mean... You're young, I, I mean, you've done a phenomenal job getting to the yeah. point where you are now. So I think, again, aesthetically the best outcome, yeah, putting in a small implant to help fill out some of the skin. Okay. The only other thing, my arms I'm not are not an issue. Okay. Is, this would probably be the only other thing, which I know, I feel, isn't like surgery like the bigger ones, like... No. More risk of infection? No. No. The, in terms, of, no. In terms I'm of the, <laughs> in terms of the magnitude of the surgery, this is the biggest one. Okay. For sure. Um, in terms of which is the most annoying, <laughs> the legs. <yeah. laughs> okay. um, simply just because of the fact. I mean, yeah. I mean, in order to be able to try and get rid of some of this, I mean, it's much like here. You have extra skin. Right. Um, and because you have extra skin, if we just remove the fat there, then you're just going to be left with even more yeah. hanging skin. So yeah. you need to remove the extra skin. And so with that, usually we make an incision that sort of comes down into here, and then one that goes up into the groin crease, so that we can take off that extra skin this way end up like that right so, <laughs> so so now 
in, in terms of magnitude, it's no. This is bigger in terms because we're right. going all the way around yeah. over here. This is more annoying okay. simply because of when you walk, it kind of rubs together a yeah. little bit. When you sit down here, I mean, it kind of pulls on the incision that's just right up at the top here. Okay. And so it's more annoying, yeah. but not necessarily more uncomfortable. Okay. And with you, when we do the legs, as we do with most people, is basically we'll liposuction some of this as well to try and reduce. I mean, again, you don't have much in here, mm -hmm. but we're trying to get a little bit smaller out of here to get some of the fat out and then, yeah, again, just pull it tighter in like that. Okay. Arms, you said? What's uh, they're not that bad. I mean, I have a little bit, but it doesn't bother me like you, as much as my everything wait, else. Do that again? <laughs> yeah, you have know, nice <laughs> arms. Holy cow. <laughs> Thanks. Dang. <laughs> So I don't know. I do have it, and like sometimes like this hangs over and stuff, but it doesn't bother <laughs> me. <laughs> She's at the female version of your arm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah right. So, um, so with your arms, yeah, I, you know, you've got a minimal amount here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Good for you. Thank so you. you've got a minimal amount here. The question always with this, basically, in my estimation, is is how much extra skin do you have here, and is it worth the big incision that's, that goes down there? That, yeah. That's and then, why so it's not for me, really. I would agree. I would say I was about to say it's good that we agree because yeah. I would say to be honest, it's not worth it. Yeah. Um, yeah. To make this incision down here because you can remove a little bit here to take it up a little bit, but in in your situation, it's actually not probably going to be that significant. Okay. Yeah. That's now, the thing is the scars where I was like. It doesn't bother me enough to where I would want the big scars. Yeah. You know? Yeah. No, and I, and I would agree. And yeah. Your arms did really well. I know. Thanks, they yeah. did. I, I mean, for 145 pounds. Yeah, yeah. you got like the one part I'm like, I'm good. So the plan again here, what we're gonna, what we're doing is basically a belt light pack from our body lift going all the way around. So what we would do in the front here is you have your two, you have your C-section scars here. So we'll start below the C-section scar down here, sort of right kind of where this, these underwear line is here. So start here, lift up all of the skin, tighten up your stomach muscles underneath, which have been separated out due to pregnancy and weight gain and weight loss, obviously. Tighten up those stomach muscles, pull this skin and fat down as far as we can, and take as much of it off as we can, which is generally everything from about here to just above your belly button. So all the scars will be gone except for the one you made. You got it. Yep. Okay. The C-section scars would be gone, this scar would be gone, and this skin here would end up down here. So okay. if you're pulling all of this all the way down. The, so then these stretch marks will end up down here. That's correct. Yep. Okay. This stre these stretch marks are this stretch mark right here would end up way down there. Okay. So all of this would come off. All of the stretch marks down under here would also be completely removed. So crazy. The incision then we take the incision keeps on coming around here, just sort of kind of right where your underwear line is mm -hmm. coming up onto here, and then we take off all of this extra skin that's on the side and pull up on the outside of the thigh. So all of this comes off. So essentially, almost everything from about here to here gets completely removed, and this skin here gets sewn to this skin here and comes up like that lifts up everything and then comes all the way around again where the incision comes up to the top of the buttock area lifting up taking up all of this stuff right here oh my gosh i cannot even imagine that. that's so it's great weird. and any extra fat oh you don't have an extra fat. <laughs> so yeah i mean <laughs> Sometimes we liposuction a little bit on the side here and up under the waist. That was another question fat. that they had. I forgot to ask you, like, <clears throat> who would be a candidate for lipo? Or do you always do it? Usually, usually always do it unless you're an indi unless you don't have fat, <laughs> right? Um, but yeah, we generally do it up into here. Sometimes under the middle of the back into here, onto the waist. And if you have any extra fat, then we'll do that. Okay. Sometimes a we'll liposuction on the outside of the thigh here as well to help lift up here okay. and take out some of this extra fat. But so it's just kind of when you're in there, if you feel yes. like we need it. Okay. Yeah, you got it. To okay. basically make the, the result even better. Cool. Yeah. Underneath here, your skin is this wide here, but underneath you're actually a lot thinner because there's your bone right here. And that's, that's what the width would be to there. And again, again, because you've got a great waist, that waist would come in as well and that's the hardest part about all of this <clears throat> is i look in the mirror and i still feel like i still feel fat or overweight right. because it just looks like that but i know underneath i have yeah it's like this yeah. is all yeah and see that and that's the that's the so hard mentally and that's one of the great things about sort of the end of this journey or completing this journey yes. is that the the mental aspect of it from anybody who's, who's been big has lost weight is that you still feel like you have to hide it. Yes. You still feel big because you have this extra skin. Mm -hmm. You're not, and you've done a phenomenal job getting to where you are. Thank you. But in order to be able to get to that final step where mentally you can see the benefits and what you've been able to achieve, yeah. we need to take off that extra skin to see sort of what you have so you don't have to hide anything anymore. Yeah, a 360 versus a tummy tuck. Right. What did it, what, who would be a good candidate? So the side, 
and like the back area. Yeah, so I mean, <laughs> right. I mean, it's the amount of extra skin really that you have yeah, on the side and towards the back here. And I'd say, I mean, even in your situation, I mean, you don't have a tremendous amount, but you have a significant amount that you can actually pinch and lift up there. Right. And the problem again comes if you just do the front, this looks nice and tight and flat, but when you look at yourself or anybody else and do, this is flat, but then again, this kind of sticks out yeah. and, and it's too much on the side here. Going back and doing a posterior lift, again, is not as good as doing it just all the way works. around for the first time. And yeah. indeed, when we come back and we do posterior lifts, after somebody's had a tummy tuck, you actually have to come back around here. That's because, what she said, yeah. Because you have to take out, in my estimation, you have to take out this extra skin that's yeah. on the side here, or else it's still going to stick out. Right. So you've got to come back in around here. So you're sort of, you're compromising it um, because you don't get the best aesthetic results. You've right. had to do two surgeries anyway. You've done just tummy and the breast in one and then the posterior yeah. breast in another one. If you're doing two surgeries anyway, do the best thing from an aesthetic perspective. If you're going to have two surgeries, do both. Right. And then you come back and do the breast. Okay. A lot of questions on recovery time and people with kids like me, like when can I lift my baby up, like that kind of stuff and working out. Okay. So reco recovery basically is totally variable depending upon the actual individual. Yeah. But as a general rule, we'll tell you, don't do anything too much that's going to get your heart rate or blood pressure yeah. up for the first two weeks. Okay. So don't lift, push, pull, carry anything heavier than about 10 to 15 pounds okay. for two weeks. And you know, I'll tell you that we don't need to tell you that because you're not going to do anything. So two weeks in okay. terms of being very careful in terms of what you need to do. After two weeks, you can slowly start to increase your activity level at your tolerance. Okay. Okay. So what that means is, that in general, however, most people don't get back to their normal activities for about four to six weeks. Okay. Okay. But after two weeks, you can slowly start to doing it. Now, in terms of picking up kids, yes, you can gently pick up your child depending upon how much they weigh. If you pick up your child or anything else, you have to do it properly. Mm -hmm. Meaning you sort of, you bend down, keep your back straight, grab your child or anything else you're picking up close into your body and stand up, use your legs to stand up, rather than bending yeah. over forward to use your core to do it. Okay. I'd say that even though we'll tell you after two weeks you can, you generally don't. Okay. Um, because it's still going to be pretty uncomfortable. And the yeah. reason it's uncomfortable is the muscles that we tighten up here to bring it back together again. Anytime that you use your stomach muscles, it's going to be a little uncomfortable. Yeah. So things like you know picking up, well, and that, coughing, sneezing, laughing, yeah. breathing, you know, all of those things. <laughs> I mean, I've had two C sections. That's nothing compared to all the way around, and I remember how much it hurt to cough and all that stuff. So. <laughs> well, that, I mean, it's actually interesting you bring that up in terms of what is the what is the relationship between C section recovery discomfort and going all the way around. And around. the muscle repair too. Also. Right. So the thing about C sections and sort of C sections in general, depending upon how it's done, is that a lot of times they'll actually cut through the muscle. Mm -hmm. So make an incision here and you actually cut through your rectus muscles here. Yeah. Cutting through muscles is really, really uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. um, we don't do that. So okay. all we're doing when we repair the muscles, we're actually taking the outside covering of the muscle and just sewing it back together again. So we don't cut the muscle, we don't see the muscle, we don't we don't do anything to it other than just bring it back together again. Okay. So the discomfort associated with C section, yeah, I mean it's uncomfortable. It's similar to kind of what we're doing. Even though we're doing a much bigger surface area yeah. more, because we're not cutting through the muscle in C sections a lot of times they do, it's it's similar. Okay, so I can tell myself I'm somewhat mentally prepared. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, so I mean if you've certainly been through two C sections, again I mean, you have the perspective, and I, and right. I you know, I, I always say anything in life, any event, any situation in life, how good or how bad it is, is always dependent upon the perspective that we have on it. Yeah. And if you have perspective, if you've been through life events and life mm -hmm. situations, you've got a different mentality and a different perspective on totally. it. Totally. And that's the way it is. I mean, we'll assign it either good or bad depending upon what our mind tells us. Yeah. And that's sort of, again, based upon perspective. So yes, you've been through two C sections, mm -hmm. so you have a perspective, okay. which is good. Okay. Um, and then another question was about the belly button. Like, do people get to choose the kind of belly button? That's the question. I mean, no and yes. So do okay. you get to choose? We don't, I mean, we don't make you a new belly button. So you right. keep your belly yeah, button. Yeah, you so just pull it through. Yeah, exactly. So what we do is we cut around it. We leave it attached to the muscle wall. And then when we pull the skin back down, we just poke it through a new hole. Now, getting to the shape that you design in order to be able to create that belly button, there are certain aesthetic appeals in terms of what you want. Mm -hmm. And so the, the basic is you want it fairly circular in nature, yes. not sort of oval 
or a coin slot, so to speak. Yeah. And you want to have a what we call a little hood in the upper portion of the belly button that sort of comes down a little mm -hmm. bit. So, so yeah, there are certain technical things that we do in order to be able to try and do that, um, to make it circular in nature, not necessarily oval, not a coin slot, and then create sort of a, a hood over the top and then basically where the scar is on the inside so that it's not super obvious. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah, you keep your belly button. Your belly button is your belly button. Yeah. But it's gonna. It looks significantly different now and afterwards because, of course, now you've got all this extra right. skin on the top. Right. Oh my gosh. A lot of people were asking, like, the criteria to get something like this in relation to like hitting your goal weight and maintaining for a certain amount of time. Yeah. Do you have like a certain recommendation that you give people? Yes. I mean, two things. So they're both two different subjects. So goal weight and then maintaining. Yeah. So, Start with the second one first. Okay. Maintain and get it. You should be at a plateau for about six months. Okay. Um, and that's kind of optimal. And so what I mean by plateau is basically, you know, within five or 10 pounds is absolutely fine. I mean, mm -hmm. but you don't want to be either going up or going down by 20 or 30 pounds. Yeah. Because then you kind of, you don't know what you're dealing with. Yeah. Um, so a goal, I mean, a plateau for about six months. Now, okay. goal weight is something completely different. Yeah. Because a goal weight is an ideal number mm -hmm. that is generated either by you or by somebody else based upon theoretical things. Right. And personally, I think goal weight is variable depending upon the individual person. So everybody generally wants to be at, you know, as low as possible. Right. But sometimes that's just not possible. Mm -hmm. And I think you have to be realistic with yourself yes. and realistic in life to be able to say, you know what, I'd love to be at this, but I'm at this and I can't get any lower. That's fine. Yeah. That's absolutely fine. And I think if you are at a diet and exercise program and plan that is consistent, that's something that you can continue on for years to come mm -hmm. and you're plateaued, you're good. Okay. Yeah. So, no, you do not need to be at goal weight because, again, that's just some theoretical ideal right. that, again, is based upon certain statistics or somebody that made up. So, okay. plateaued for at least six months and basically a stable diet and exercise plan. I got a lot of questions on price. That was probably the main question, <laughs> <laughs> of course. And if there's payment plans and stuff like that. Yeah, there is a price. I mean, the price is variable depending upon sort of what needs to be done yeah. and how much needs to be done. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's a it's a range in terms mm -hmm. of the prices and certainly. Yeah. yeah so I would say a tummy tuck is usually like eleven or twelve thousand, okay. and then a body lift. You could say like around twenty. Okay. Yeah. Do drains, correct? Correct. Okay. Yeah. Now for that, yes, for belt going all the way around, yes. I mean drains just because. You're, you have a fair amount of trauma. Yeah. I mean, we're okay. reflecting a fair amount of trauma. And basically, trauma is you're going to produce fluid. This swelling, this fluid that can accumulate underneath the skin. As I always say, it's kind of like fall down, twist your ankle, your ankle gets big, right? right. You create fluid in response to that trauma. So, yeah, this is a fair amount of trauma. Um, so, yes, you have drains going all the way around. There are some people where we do just tummy tucks, where you don't need drains because it's you're doing less. And certainly, okay. especially in somebody such as yourself that doesn't have a lot of fat, yeah. where you don't need to do a lot of liposuction, you can theoretically get away without drains, but going all the way around, yes. Okay. Yeah. And then the last question, this is just my question. Since I've had two C-sections and another surgery, is scar tissue like an issue when you're doing something like this? No? No. Okay. No. It's exceedingly common that people okay. have had C-sections or something else. So, okay. no. And I mean, in essence, I mean, we remove all of the scar tissue that's there that's between the muscle and the skin. So with the C-section scars, wherever the C-section scar is, we always go below that so that we can remove that scar. Okay. So, yeah, it's not a big issue at all. Okay. Yeah. This is the, I mean, it's a fun part, I think. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's an amazing thing for us to be able to be part of a journey for somebody to get from where you were to where you can be. Mm -hmm. And again, we're just a small part of it. I mean, obviously, yeah. I mean, we help along the way, but I mean, for you to be able to do that, to get from where you were before to where you can be in the future. I mean, it's, it's an amazing thing. Thank you. Yeah. And what I, what I always tell people, to, I mean, I could go on forever, but, I mean, <laughs> but what I tell people as well is, I mean, the inspiration that you can, that you can and do serve to other people that you will never meet yeah, is, is, is amazing. And again, I mean, in this life, what we can do is, you know, we can go down our path and our journey in life to make ourselves better, but that's not necessarily the most important thing, I think. Right. It's to make ourselves better, to serve as a path and a guide for others. Yes. If other people can see you and you, they can look at you and you go, look where you've come and what you've done. If you can do that, I can do that. Yeah. That's an amazing thing. Yeah. It's an amazing gift to be able to give you know, to you, your family, your kids, to people you'll never meet. 
It's an amazing yeah. thing. I was planning on having another baby like a while mm. back, and then I, once I had my second son, I was like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm done. <laughs> um, She's good. Yeah. Now, if I know I'm still young and everything, if at some point my mind changes, it wouldn't be for I like our age gap with our kids about four yeah. or five years. Okay. But the main question people had is what happens if you get pregnant after? Would you recommend waiting or would you recommend if yeah. a certain time frame? So I do recommend waiting, not for the first year. Okay. And so after the first year, you're, you're fine. Right. Um, and if you get pregnant again, I mean, all we've done when we're taking off this extra skin and tightening with the muscles, we've put you back to normal, right. so to speak. <laughs> so before, imagine you never had the weight gain and the yeah. pregnancy. We've put you back to normal. Your body can still go through the normal transitions of pregnancy. You're still going to stretch out. Your mm -hmm. skin's going to stretch. Your muscles are going to get stretched because we haven't done anything unusual. Right, right. So you certainly still can get pregnant. Not a problem. Will your skin stretch out again? Yes, absolutely. It'll yeah. stretch out again. Will it shrink again? No, no. That maybe, maybe not. Because okay. again, I mean, it's just like if you're at a normal age and you get pregnant for the first time, will your skin shrink again after right. that? Some do, some don't. Similar situations such as this. You may feel a little tighter because, of course, we've tightened everything back yeah. up again. But pregnancy in and of itself is not a problem, but after the first year. Okay, so it's just kind of like, well, for me, like what I have now is nothing compared to if I were to get pregnant and have some stretching. Like it's so different, Correct. you know what I mean? So if yeah. if that were to happen, I would be willing to risk that at some point, but right now, yeah. it's yeah. no. But a lot of people <laughs> were asking, like, is it dangerous? The people were like, no. can it harm you? Is it risks like that? Yeah, no, not at all. Because okay. again, all we're doing is we're putting you back to normal. We're just removing this extra skin that has been created through pregnancy and weight gain okay. that had you not been pregnant or had you not gained a weight wouldn't be there. Yeah. So we're just removing what has been generated through that and we're putting the muscles back together where they were to begin with. So yeah. we're not doing anything differently that's not normal. We're just restoring normal anatomy. So, no, absolutely not. It's not you would just get like normal mommy tummy stretching. You got it. Like a normal, right? say normal, but like yes. a, a normal mom. Cool. Hi guys, so I'm back. I've been back for a little bit now. Um, I'm actually getting ready to go to dinner here soon um, at this restaurant like right across the street from the hotel. But, wow, I, I just like cannot stop smiling. Like I'm just so excited. Dr. Dry is just so amazing. He's so nice. He's so like just I don't know. He just made me feel so good and like so excited. The whole staff was so nice. Like as soon as I walked in, they're so welcoming. They showed me around and everything. And that is where the place I got my consultation, that's where they do the surgery. It's like a little private, like, um, facility and there's like two surgery rooms like it's really like comfortable and i don't know i just i i'm just so happy so um it went really well you guys heard what he said he definitely recommends the 360 for me which that's what i figured because i know i have a lot of skin on my sides and my back and stuff too so i'm so excited and um i know a lot of you guys had questions about the pricing of this so the pricing is going to be different for every single person um but the basic like price for a 360 body lift, not just a tummy tuck, a 360 body lift is around 20,000. Um, so like I said, it's gonna be different for everybody, but that's why you do consultation, all that kind of stuff. Um, and a tummy tuck, like a basic tummy tuck is normally I think around, I think they said like 15,000. So, or no, I think they said like 12,000. So it just depends, you're gonna have, it depends where you're going, what you need and everything. So it's, it's just different for everybody, but that is that i'm so excited and i'm flying home tomorrow i'm gonna edit this video on the way home i miss my babies so much like i know it's just a day but i just miss them i'm not, I'm not gonna get home until like 8 p.m tomorrow so it's gonna be a long day but i'm so excited to see my babies and this was amazing i do not have a date yet for my surgery we have to coordinate a lot of things um to try to figure out a good date so as soon as i know an exact date of course i'll let you guys know um as of right now we're not sure yet we're still working out the logis logistics of that so that is that i hope you guys enjoyed this video and i will see you in my next one